So welcome back to the shop, friends. So you spent some mad coin on a uh, Grand Force Brooks axe, or maybe a John Neiman axe, or maybe a really beautiful set of uh, timber framing chisels. Well, winter's coming on, it's time to put them away properly so that when spring comes and you grab them out of the, uh, out of the old toolbox, that you don't have some unpleasant surprises. So today we're gonna to cover real briefly how to take care of your, uh, your handles to prep them for winter, how to take care of your leather sheaths. This is gonna to apply to uh, boots, it's gonna to apply to leather belts, anything that you have leather. Remember, leather needs special attention because it is it was a living organism and what keeps it nice and supple and soft is oils. And if your leather gets wet or it's in, in a dirty environment, all of those oils will leach out and you need to replenish them. If you replenish them, they'll last Long, long time. If you don't, not so much. So let's uh, take a look at what we're gonna need and then we'll get started on uh, our ax winterization. What I'd recommend you do with this stuff is, is get yourself or build yourself a small wooden box like the size of an old milk crate or so and keep inside that uh, all of your stuff for, for your shoe care, leather care, uh, ax handle stuff. You can just put it all into one box and when you go to do those things, pull it out and you have everything you need. So what we're gonna need, uh, you want a pair of gl uh, rubber gloves. You want a good, one thing you wanna buy and, and have in your, in your collection is a good uh, stiff bristle brush. Uh, this this type here that you can hold in your hand. I don't like the ones with the with the handles that go over. They bust your knuckles. Just a basic brush like this, that that you can a boot brush or a shoe brush as they used to call it. Of course, the ubiquitous boiled linseed oil and some sort of leather cleaner. Uh, you can use saddle soap or I, I love the Obanoff stuff. This is their leather cleaner. Uh, Obanoffs, their uh, protectant. I have in the past been a huge advocate of the HD, the paste stuff that we use in wildland firefighting. A few years ago, they turned me on to the liquid. I like it better. It's easier. It seems to, it seems to be easier to apply. It's, it's less fuss around, and I just don't use this anymore. I like this so well. And of course, some ballastol, and last is going to be a, a little bit of steel wool. Okay, you're going to go online, and you're going to read, and all the sites are going to tell you 220, pre-sand with 220, and then cover with boiled linseed oil, right? No. The same guy that tells you that's probably the same guy telling you to soak your ax head in water if it gets loose. Bad advice. You don't sand your ax handle. You've got a beautiful patina on here. You, you earned it with blood, sweat, blisters, and tears. You don't want that to go, to, go, to, go away. Sandpaper just makes that all go away. You scrape. So what we're scraping is, you can see here, is, is sap. So take a bushcraft knife, any knife you have, and just scrape, scrape that off there like that. Just like that. Scrape that off. If you want to, you don't have to. Sometimes I leave mine on there because it, you know, it gives you a little ex extra grip. But if it gets real heavy like this, you, you know, you just scrape that off there like that. It just comes off nice and easy, like that, and scrape that whole thing. Now, if it's really dirty, you know, you can you can hit it real quickly with a mild detergent. Uh, but I, I haven't found that to be necessary. Usually, just a just a scraping, knock off the chunks here. Like that, and we're good. You know, even right here, see how heavy that is? That's just sap there. You know, not sanding, do not sand, sand your hand. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it's just, this is better. Right there, how long did that take, right? We're looking, everything looks good. We don't need to do any more than that. Okay, with that said, uh, we'll set this aside. Let's take a look at the sheath. Now, the, the leather, your leather sheaths, uh, it's really important that they're clean before you apply your Obanoffs or, or whatever it is you're applying. So what I nine times out of ten, you don't need to use a cleaner unless it's super, super dirty. You know, just get just take your brush. Just take your brush and what that will do is that will knock all the dirt off and that will open kind of open up the pores a little bit uh, so that you can see right there, that's really dirty right there. It's got a bunch of goo on there. You know, we could even scrape that off there too a little bit if we need to. Just not that important. I rarely use cleaner. Uh, only thing I use it on is my wildland boots um, because that's just because I'm really fussy, fussy with them. That's it. You're prepped. Now, here's a trick. Here's a pro tip trick. You try to, you're going to waste a lot of this stuff if you pour it out. Uh, pour it into your hands. It's going to go all over your bench and, and all of that. So what I do is I put it in a spray bottle. It's thin enough where you can just spray it and this makes applying it so much faster to your boots. If you work construction or you're in leather boots all the time, you can come home, you know, because doing your boots takes a long time and, you know, guys, everybody's busy. You take this brush and you hit, you knock the brush off and you give it a spray. Just spray it down there and, and just wear them or spray it when you're leaving for work. 
um, and you can keep your boots ni nice. So just put a little on there, right there, and don't forget this guy here, and you rub it in with by your hand. It's important to rub it in with your hand because the warmth from your body, the warmth of your fingers and your hand, will help the, the oil, it's all natural, this Obanoffs, this oil to penetrate. Don't forget the ends, because that's the thickest part. Some guys forget that, so you don't want to give special attention to those ends, and so that soaks up in there. And whether you're doing your boots or, or whatever you're doing, don't overlook the, the inside, because the inside's what's coming in contact with the steel. And if this has got a good coating on it, it's going to help the leather much, much more. I even oil the inside of my boots. You get oily feet for a few days, but it makes them really nice and supple. But also, if there's any moisture or anything in the leather, it's going to help block that, because that and that's going to prevent corrosion and rust. So what I typically do, how many coats do you need? Well, I put coats on until it quits soaking it up. So I'll just apply this and get some warmth and some heat in it. And this is the same for anything. You know, you got your sheath, all your sheath, do it, do it to everything, your leather belts, all that. You know, put that on there. Man, it, I'll tell you what, over the years, you, you do this for 10, 15 years and you do it annually, man, you get a piece, a beautiful piece of leather that you just can't, you can't get any, any other way. It's just a slow process. If you got stuff like this, it's hard to get to, you know, you could spray that down in there. It's not going to hurt a thing. Right there. That's done. That's ready to go. Put your knife back in there. So if it does want to shrink a little bit, it's going to shrink around there. But look how nice that is. Isn't that beautiful? So I'll set those aside. Um, I'll leather up everything while, that, uh, while that's soaking in. We may put another coat on. We'll take a look at the steel. How do we look after the steel in our axes? Well, that's, that's pretty simple right here. Okay, so steel wool is going to be your friend on this. You see, what you have here is when you have a, a, a surface that's all coated with sap and, and uh, let me bring you in here a little closer, with sap and, and uh, whatever it is you picked up out, you know, cutting wood, um, that's going to come off real quickly. And if, a, if you leave that on there, it's going to be a real invitation for, for rust and corrosion. So a smooth blade, a smooth axe is much less likely uh, to be uh, to gather rust. This was highly polished when I started with it this year, and uh, it's not now, and that's fine. I, I like I like it like this here. If you do have something really heavy, you could take a little scraper and knock it off. But usually the steel wool will take care of everything nicely. Don't forget the pole. Once you get that head all done, I'll take that steel wool and I'll just polish this handle real quick before we put our boiled linseed oil, mainly just to clean the, the dirt off of it, any chunks or anything we didn't get with our scraper. Steel wool is, a, is an amazing product for just so many things. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. That is really nice. That's starting. That, this is a. This is only a two-year-old. It's starting to get a really nice patina on it, though, isn't it? I mean, that's that's starting to look like a something special there. Okay, so our boiled linseed oil. Now, as we know, the boiled linseed oil that we get is not like the good old stuff they used to have that was actually boiled. If you take raw linseed oil and put it on, it won't dry very fast. It'll be sticky forever. You do not want to use just regular linseed oil. You want to use BLO, boiled linseed oil. Now it's, as I said, no longer boiled, uh, but it, they add a drying chemical in it, which is not super friendly to your body. So put your gloves on. Just put a little in your hand like this, and then you can apply it onto the handle. This should be done with brand new handles. Remember, this is a brand new raw wood handle, once a week for a month, once a month for a year, and then after that, once a year. Don't forget these ends. Remember, wood is like a bunch of straws com uh, compressed real tightly, and it drinks in, dries, it gains moisture, and gives moisture out through the ends. So, you, yeah, it's easy to put it on the outside, but it actually doesn't do near as much good as the ends, especially here. Now, right there, you want to make sure you put many two or three coats on there, puddle that up in there because that will help keep that wedge tight and all around there, get that in there. So let that sit a little bit and then I'll take a cloth and dry it off. 
you don't want to leave a leave it all puddled on there it will dry in kind of a almost like a shellac coating on there that's hard to get off and hurt your hands it's not very nice there so just very loosely wipe it off you can leave it heavy on the ends okay lastly what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we address this uh, the uh, the metal we don't want that to corrode and the best thing that i've found so far is ballastol so put a little ballastol on there right there and, and rub all that real heavy leave it heavy on there if you're going to put it away and you're not going to use it for a while and get those ends and that's the last thing we're going to do we're going to coat that both sides i love the smell of ballastol man my favorite smell some people say they hate it get down there on the edge push away from the blade so you don't cut yourself once you get that ballastol on there then you're good you're going to take your sheath see looky there see that's still that's not soaking in there very good there's still a little bit of obanoffs on there that's a that sheath is in good shape we don't need to go any further than that if you can over oil a sheath and they will they'll get kind of mushy i've done that before because i was a little overexcited about protecting it so with that ballastol in there put it on there take our cloth one last time and just knock down the the anything that's puddled up on there like that and there you have it you can have one less thing to worry about that your your special tools your special special axe is put away you know do the same thing for your shovels and for your rakes and all that it's exactly the same process you just uh you know you, sh you sharp sharpen them when you put them away sharpen them in the fall and and then uh, coat those wood that wood handles with the boiled linseed oil the ballastol on there you can put the ballastol on a spray bottle as well what i typically do for my woodworking tools is you can put it on a silicone rag and what's nice about that is i'll put it in a metal container like this and then ev just every few months or so i'll just put a few dashes in there and kind of wring that out and it makes your ballastol go a long ways i've had this can for several years now and it's maybe a, i've only used a quarter of it uh, because i'm real sparing with it you can take that ballastol on anything real quickly and wipe it down wipe it down and, and you get a nice coating on there you don't get too much it meters it out perfectly and uh, you just put it right back in your can and it's ready for next time so that's about it it's it's not hard and it's a very satisfying good thing to do with your kids teaches them a Gives them a lesson about stewardship while they're having fun. So much, so much is disposable in our lives. I think that's why these, these things that are kind of these handmade things, these things of leather and wood are appeal to us so much because they, well, they just have a soul, you know? They just seem to have a soul. It seems to me that way anyway. All right, you know what time it is. While we're all here, it's time for Manly Manners. So if you're just joining us, this is from the delightful book, Don'ts for Husbands. My, I got my carpenter pencil bookmark there written in 1913. Advice to young and old men on how to have better relationships uh, with our uh, advice for relationships so we can get along better with women. <laughs> so uh, let's go. We're on page three. And Manly Matters tells us this. Don't be too grave and solemn. To read, you look through my readers here. Raise a bit of fun in the home now and then. Don't keep all your best jokes for your men friends. Let your wife share them. And don't look at things solely from a man's point of view. Put yourself in your wife's place to see how you would like some of the things she has to put up with. Okay, so number one, so don't be too grave and solemn. You know, M Mrs. W and I were talk talking about this the other day. She was, uh, you know, it's kind of coming up on her time for... Uh, well, they're having some sort of a reunion. I don't remember if it's high school or college or what it was. And you know, she's starting to make contact with some of those folks that are in her age bracket. And she made the comment of, uh, it's like, wow, the, these people that I are same age as I am, they've gotten so old uh, in their, and the way that their appearance and then their demeanor, and they almost, they just, they just don't know how to have, they don't seem like they have, have fun anymore. They kind of have just given up on life and, and settled in for the long grind, looking forward to death. And that's a very broad generalization and probably not true. So don't, what do I know about it? But it, it's just, but some folks live that way. And I, um, uh, I'm very blessed to have a, um, a spouse that uh, is the opposite of that. And, and I've always been that way myself. I, I always, I always feel, I still feel like a kid. I mean, I, I know I'm not a kid, but I, 
I still have the uh, curiosity and I like to do new things and I, I, I am definitely getting more set in my ways, but, but maybe less, like, less so than a lot of folk do. And I think that's what Manly Manners is, here is, is telling us is don't be too grave and, and too serious. And life is tough and life is hard. But remember when there's things that are just gut checks for us, whether it be financial problems or health scares or you losing a job or something, something that just seems like the end of the world to you and you can't focus on anything else and it's just pushing you down and just weighting you down and you just don't see the end of it. Just look back on your life and you look, look how many times God has carried you through um, and those things that were so scary to you at the time now are, there, it wasn't really that big of a deal. And it wasn't that probably wasn't worth getting getting yourself all upset about back then at that time. So take it easy and, and enjoy life. Remember to uh, look be be put yourself ar be around kids and young people as much as possible, uh, so that you can not forget what it means to just to have pure joy. The thing that's so uh, fun with uh, watching you know Jack grow up and, and the Sweet Loaf is that they they are unencumbered with uh, with past regrets, with past mistakes, with um, the cares and the worries of, of world and of the world. And, and there, there is a time for that. And then there's a time to be, to be sober and, and, you know, take on the responsibilities of a man, but not to the point where you lose that, that, um, that joy of life. And so being around those young people is, is uh, really nice because it, it helps to remember what it means to, to get excited about stuff. And you're never too old to do that. And actually, being getting older has a lot of benefits as well because you know, when you get older, you, you have the means oftentimes in time and financially uh, to do the things that young folks can't do. So you can enjoy uh, going into the second part of your life and you, you have uh, more resources and more money to, to do the things that you dreamed of doing when you were a kid. So it's not all perfect, you know, youth. It's, uh, of course, it, you know, it's nice, it would certainly be nice to have, but it's also nice to... To grow, to grow old and, and to enjoy those other sides on the back end of life as well uh, and not spend all of our time uh, lamenting our wasted or lost youth. So, whoa, that's a little head, probably too heavy for me. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.